Hello everyone, welcome to a Whisper Quest speedrunning guide for Warlocks. This one is going to be interesting. I'll show you a few ways to navigate the mission, some requiring a lot more practice than others, and I just want to say before this video starts that this was all done and filmed on a regular old Xbox One. I don't own a PC. Also disregard the mission timer, these clips are all from different runs that I'm using to show you how to complete each section. To start off, I like using Dawnblade for the Whisper mission in general, specifically Bottom Tree, but you can use any subclass. I also use Burst Glide for this. Transversive steps are great for speedrunning of course, so make sure to put those on as well. And for most of this video I'll be using the exotic sword World Line Zero, which you get from collecting 35 late memories in Mars Patrol. To start the mission off, follow the path I take to get up to the Blight. This is the easiest path I've found for Warlocks to use. In my latest video you might have seen me use a sword against the Blight, which I'll do here too, because using two heavy attacks with a sword seems to be one of the fastest ways to destroy it. Continue the usual route, eventually you get to the first punching wall. This is where the speedrunning comes in. If you want to skip the entire section, you can use the World Line Zero to Tesseract fly across the entire map here. It can be very tricky to execute this inside the mission as you don't have a lot of wiggle room when running alongside the course. Tesseract flying will come into play multiple times in this video, so if you want to learn how to do it, I'll try my best to explain it quickly. Using the World Line Zero, you must sprint long enough until the sword's Temporal Sprint buff pops up on your screen. This means you can do the exotic sword's special move Tesseract, which lets you teleport through the air. Now if you Sprint off an edge right as you walk off, you use the sword's tesseract ability. As soon as you see your character completely disappear from the screen, you double tap the jump button, and if you nail the timing perfectly, it'll send you flying. I suggest practicing this on patrol, near a rally flag, so you can keep fast traveling back and replenishing ammo because you don't get a lot for swords in Destiny 2. If you can consistently perform this maneuver, then I'd say you're ready to try it in the mission itself. So let's watch this again. I launch myself across the chasm, and I aim my reticle towards the spot I want to launch myself to. And when you approach landing, you want to double tap jump and then swing your sword. Do not press jump once and then swing or else you'll only be able to mid-air boost twice. Double tap jump, swing, let yourself fall a little, and then repeat it twice more until you can get to the ledge. Now this section is probably the trickiest launch in the entire mission because you have almost no room to charge up your sprint. The easiest way I found to do this is to start by sprinting at the wall, then jump so you can spin around without running off the ledge, aim your reticle at the first blue light, and launch yourself over to it. Once you're here, you can either run this section like normal, or if you want to save a few seconds, you can try to time it so that you climb up onto the second sphere and jump onto the elevator as it's rising up. You'll want to get on the sphere by using your sword, and ideally you'll want the elevator already rising up as soon as you've gotten onto the sphere so you can jump onto the next platform without wasting any time. Now the diamond hallway is mostly RNG, having your sword out can help prevent you from falling into the pit. The only tip I have for this section which is going to help you if you want to be more safe than fast, is to start running when the first block section is rising up, so you'll be running over it as it's raising, which means the second block will be lowering when you get to it. If you stay to the right you should be able to make it no problem. If you don't want to time it, just run through with a sword and use that to help you if you fall, which is probably faster in most cases. Now the final sword launch is pretty easy because it's just a straight shot and you have plenty of room to run up. Your goal is to launch yourself straight to the middle platform in which you have to crouch or slide under. Once you get there, just run the rest of the room and the mission as normal. If you're going to take the normal route and skip all this sword flying stuff, my recommendations would be to use transversive steps for faster sprint speed. Icarus Dash from Dawnblade could be really helpful, which is the top tree, if you need that extra boost to get onto a ledge. And using a sword can be a lifesaver as a warlock. My fastest time doing a normal run on warlock was just over 3 minutes, around the same time as my hunter speedrun video. So if you can get around 3-3.5 three to three and a half minutes, you'll be golden for the rest of the mission. Using Tesseract Flying, you can complete the jumping puzzle in under 2.5 minutes, which is insane. Unfortunately, I didn't get to record an entire run of just using the Tesseract Tesseract flying because the mission went away at reset and if I wanted to record it I'd have to wait till next weekend to do it. Sorry this video took so long to get out as most of you know the mission's no longer available now by the time this video is up but it will return back at Friday at reset and lasts until Monday at reset like it does every weekend. At least it will for the foreseeable future. If this guide was interesting or if it helped you or if you learned anything please let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching.